Hi, I'm Gary Martin Hayes. Welcome to our free webinar about uh, car wreck claims here in Georgia. Now, I've designed the material to give you an overview of what happens in a personal injury claim. And if you've never been involved in a car wreck, you are very, very lucky. But chances are you're watching the video now because you or a loved one has been injured in a wreck. The trauma of the impact alone, that's frightening enough. But now you're faced with a lot more questions. You're injured and you need medical treatment. You may not have health insurance to cover your medical bills. You may not be able to work because of your injuries. You are worried because the paychecks have stopped coming in, but the bills haven't. And you may be left without a car. So where do you turn? What do you do next? What are your rights? And what are the insurance company's responsibility? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the following. The three things you must prove in a personal injury claim how we can get you the medical treatment you need even if you don't have health insurance. The top five things I recommend you do when you go to the doctor for treatment for your injuries. What is your case really worth? And finally, do you try and take on the insurance company and their lawyers by yourself? So let's get started with our first topic. What are the three things you must prove in a personal injury claim? Well, we have to establish the following. Someone was negligent in causing the wreck, someone besides yourself. We have to prove that the person's negligence was the proximate cause of their injuries. We have to show the injuries and damages that were sustained as a result of the wreck. Now, this may sound somewhat complicated, but let me break down each of these three elements below. And we're gonna start with negligence. We have to prove that someone besides yourself was at fault for causing the wreck. This is often referred to as negligence. For example, when the defendant crashes into the back of your car because they were riding your bumper and tailgating, they were negligent as they did not maintain a uh, safe following distance or they failed to keep a proper lookout of the road ahead. Okay, the second thing we have to prove is proximate cause. Once we prove the other driver was negligent, then we must show that their negligence was the proximate cause of your injuries. Now, I know this sounds somewhat confusing. How could their negligence not cause my injuries? Well, here's an example. Assume you're stopped at a light. Another car stops behind you. We'll call that vehicle two. All of a sudden, vehicle three comes along and crashes into the rear of vehicle two, forcing that vehicle into the rear of your car. Well, your car is damaged and you're hurt because vehicle two was forced into you. However, vehicle two was not the proximate cause of your injuries. They were not negligent in any way. Their vehicle was pushed into you because of the negligence of driver number three. Therefore, you don't have a claim against vehicle two because they didn't do anything wrong to proximately cause your injuries. Your claim would, against, uh, would be against vehicle three. All right, now finally, we have to prove damages. And your damages could include the following, past and future medical bills, like an ambulance bill, emergency room physician, radiology, medical doctors and specialists, chiropractors, physical therapy bills, prescriptions. Damages could also include past and future lost wages, pain and suffering, emotional suffering. Now let me say this, in some situations we may even seek what are called punitive damages. The purpose of punitive damages is to punish, penalize, or deter the defendant from repeating the conduct. For example, punitive damages can be sought in wrecks where the defendant was driving their vehicle while under the influence of alcohol, or the defendant causes a wreck and attempts to flee the scene of the wreck. All right, next topic. How can we get you the medical treatment you need even if you don't have health insurance? Were well, there two ways that we can help? Let me show you. First, we will look at your automobile policy to see if you have MedPay coverage on your insurance. Now, what is MedPay coverage? This is like health insurance on your car. We get a copy of your insurance declarations page to see if you purchased MedPay coverage, and it is sometimes listed as MPC. If you have this coverage, your insurance company will pay for reasonable and necessary medical expenses up to the limits of your policy, regardless of who is at fault. Now, if you have MedPay coverage, we just submit the medical bills to your insurance company to get them paid. Well, what happens if we review your auto policy and you don't have MedPay coverage? How can we get you the medical treatment you need for your injuries? Well, we use a medical lien with your treating doctors. Well, what is that? Well, an experienced personal injury attorney can help you find a doctor that is willing to treat you through the medical lien. This is essentially an agreement between you, the person that is hurt in the wreck, and the doctor. So even when the personal injury claim settles, the attorney agrees to pay the doctor's medical bills 
from your personal injury settlement. Now, in most cases, doctors are not willing to treat a patient on a lien basis unless they know they have an attorney to protect the doctor's bills. Now, I have been practicing in the personal injury field gosh, for over 30 years. I teach other lawyers how we handle these cases. I even wrote the number one best-selling book, The Authority on Personal Injury Claims in Georgia. Doctors know Doctors trust us. They know us, they trust us because of our experience and our reputation in this field. They know that we're going to fight to get our clients the maximum recovery possible for their injuries, so they're willing to take the risk. And let me stress this, uh, this is extremely important to you. It's about your health. If you have been injured in a car wreck, it is so important that you get prompt medical care for your injuries. And this should be done regardless of whether or not you plan on presenting any kind of claim against the at-fault party's insurance company. You had your health before the wreck, and you need to get that back as best you can. And if you are hurt in a wreck and you plan on pursuing a personal injury claim, don't delay in seeking medical treatment. The insurance company will use any kind of delays that happen between the time of the wreck, the date of the wreck, and your first medical treatment to try and diminish the value of your claim. All right, next topic. Here are the top five things I recommend you do when you go to the doctor for treatment for your injuries, and here they are. Number one, tell the doctor all about your injuries, all of your injuries. You're not being a whiner, you're not being a complainer. It's important for the doctor to know what is wrong with you so he or she can treat you. Two, keep all of your medical appointments. Three, comply with the doctor's treatment recommendations. Four, keep your attorney updated about your medical treatment. And five, keep track of all your doctors and all of your medical bills. Your medical records, your bills, they are so important and an integral part of the demand package that is sent to the insurance company as a part of your personal injury claim. Now, Another topic, what is your case really worth? And this is one of the most asked questions of my clients. I even saw a lawyer's ad on television the other day where they say, call me to find out what your case is really worth. Well, here's a news flash. There is no way any attorney can tell you what your case is worth over the phone, especially if your case just happened. Let me tell you why. Uh, you need to run from anyone that pretends to, to know the answer because they don't know enough of the important facts to provide you the answer. And if anyone could tell you the answer as to what your case is worth, I could. Uh, we've recovered nearly $1 billion for our clients since 1993. Before 1993, I used to represent insurance companies and the drivers that would cause these wrecks. But we do not know enough facts yet. And that's the operative word. We don't know enough facts yet about your case that can, that can drastically affect the value of your claim. For example, here are some of the things that uh, we, we need to know. What are your injuries? Are your injuries permanent? How much is it gonna cost to get you better? What are your future medical needs? How much insurance does the other driver have? Were they on the job at the time of the wreck? Were you working at the time of the crash? And will you be able to report back to work? Was the defendant driver under the influence of alcohol or drugs at the time of the wreck? Now, these are just a few of the questions that we need answered before we can even begin to assess the true value of your claim. So if an attorney tries to tell you he thinks your case is worth a certain dollar amount and he doesn't even know the answers to these questions, then I highly recommend you hang up the phone, run from their office, do whatever you can to get away with them, away from them because I don't feel they are being completely honest with you. All right, next topic. Do I try and take on the insurance company and their lawyers by myself? Well, let me give you a scenario. You've been hurt in a car wreck and it wasn't your fault. The insurance company reluctantly agrees to pay for your car repairs and they tell you, oh, you don't need a lawyer, we'll take good care of you. Well, the adjuster makes all kinds of promises and they act like your long lost aunt that's coming in to take care of you. Beware the wolf in sheep's clothing. The insurance company is encouraging you not to have a lawyer, but every time the adjuster hangs up the phone after talking with you, he or she immediately calls their lawyer to discuss your case. Don't fall for their deception as you're going to regret it. There are far too many landmines in this claim and more than you're going to realize. And here are just a few of the concerns. Are you getting a fair settlement? Will you have to repay your health insurance for any amount that they may have paid to your health care providers? And if so, how much are you going to have to pay? 
What is the statute of limitations applicable to your claim? Does this settlement leave open the possibility that the other driver could come after you for damages? Do you really have a full understanding of what the future is going to hold for you from a medical standpoint? Did you get a report from your treating doctor that you can include in your demand package that addresses those future medical needs? If the claim does not settle, have you irreparably damaged your case to a point where no lawyer wants to step in and handle it for you? Well, you know what to do if the insurance company is taking their time getting back with you, or worse yet, they're completely ignoring you. All right, do you have the time to collect, decode, and understand all of your medical records from all of your healthcare providers? Do you know what documentation the insurance company may need to fairly evaluate your claim? And what if they ask you to sign a medical authorization that gives them access to your entire medical history? You know, do, do you have the time? Do you have the temperament, the patience, the knowledge to handle this claim on your own? Well, I will give you the same advice I would give anyone calling my office about a potential personal injury claim. Talk with an experienced personal injury attorney about the facts of your case. If they feel you have a potential claim, then you need to hire that attorney. Hire someone that specializes in personal injury, though. Today, more than ever, you should at least consult with an attorney. And it's not every day that you're going to hear this from a lawyer, but I'm very serious when I tell you this. If you don't hire me, if you don't hire my firm, please hire someone to help you. But hire someone that specializes in personal injury law. Isn't it, isn't it time you stopped losing sleep over how you're going to take on the insurance company and their team of lawyers? And do you really want the insurance company dictating what happens to you and to your case? We step in immediately to offer protection to our clients. You've been hurt enough being involved in the wreck. The last thing that you need are additional hassles from an insurance company that does not have your best interest in mind. And you don't have to be an expert in personal injury law, because we are. Our goal is to develop an open, honest, trusting, and cooperative relationship with all of our clients so we can lead you through the medical treatment and then through the settlement process. We pride ourselves on being caring, supportive, and reassuring with our clients. Let our team of experts go to work for you. Now, help is just a phone call away, but it is up to you. Just reach for the phone. You can give us a call right now, 770-934-8000. You can also email me with any questions. The email address is gary at garymartinhayes.com. Look, there is no obligation. Your inquiry is completely confidential. You have nothing to lose by calling us, but think of all you can lose if you don't. I look forward to speaking with you.